Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dmitry Belyanin. On this YouTube channel, I have been discussing the works of leading economists, political theorists, philosophers and scholars from other areas in the humanities fields and analyzing current trends. Which works of fiction show that a dictatorship of the majority is flawed? Is the well-being of the majority always good, and if not, in which cases and by which criteria can it be evil? In this video, I will show how fiction writers criticize the basic principle of utilitarianism. I will talk about two bright authors who denounce this philosophy on different grounds. First, I shall talk about the writer and philosopher Ayn Rand, who created the so-called philosophy of objectivism. Her works include the novels The Fountainhead, Atlas Shrugged, We the Living, Anthem, and several essays and books on philosophy. Unlike many of her contemporaries, Ayn Rand opposed both religion and expansion of the role of government. According to Ayn Rand, self-interest drives all healthy interaction between human beings. Rational self-interest is a virtue, and altruism, which Rand had defined as the willingness to sacrifice the interests of oneself or others in the name of some common good, is evil. Rationality, honesty, integrity, justice, productiveness, and pride, in the sense of self-respect, benefit each individual in the long run. Starting the use of force is the worst evil. Ideally, the government should only protect its citizens against violence. And the closer a government is to this ideal, the better. The ideal government consists of an army, a police, and a system of courts. Ayn Rand strongly condemned the ethics of utilitarianism. In Atlas Shrugged, John Galt, the main character, stated in his speech, you are asked to sacrifice your intellectual integrity, your logic, your reason, your standard of truth in favor of becoming a prostitute whose standard is the greatest good for the greatest number. Rand opposed any violations of individual rights to benefit the majority. According to her, rights are natural conditions enabling humans to survive as rational beings. Human rights cannot exist without property rights. Rand also strongly supported the gold standard, a monetary system under which any unit is tradable for gold. In the novel Atlas Shrugged, entrepreneurs and renowned intellectuals rebel against the extension of the government sector and regulations. They flee from unfair laws to the Gauls Gulch, and society collapses without them. Later, John Galt gives his speech demanding uncompromised deregulation. He gets arrested and tortured, but his tormentors fail and their regime ends. In the books The Fountainhead and Anthem, Rand also illustrated the atrocities of collectivism. These works are less didactic than Atlas Shrugged, but Rand is no less categorical there. Many philosophers Literary critics, political theorists, and economists criticized Ayn Rand, including many other supporters of government non-intervention. For example, Murray Rothbard had tried to join Ayn Rand's supporters in the 1950s, but they did not get along due to differences in their views. Unlike Ayn Rand, Rothbard stood for anarcho-capitalism, under which the state as such does not exist, and private companies protect citizens instead. Furthermore, unlike Ayn Rand, Rothbard was an agnostic. His wife was a Christian. Ayn Rand, a hardline atheist, demanded that they must either divorce or Rothbard should leave her organization. Ayn Rand's intolerance and unwillingness to compromise upset Rothbard, so he wrote a satirical play, Mozart was a red, communist, ridiculing Rand and her supporters. Most contemporary economists believe that government participation in the economy is vital. If only the private sector produces certain goods, they will be produced in insufficient quantities. Public goods are being consumed collectively, regardless of whether they are being paid for or not. A good is considered public if it is both non-rivalrous and non-excludable. There are many more public goods than what Rand regarded as the prerogative of the state. Furthermore, 
Many goods have externalities. These are costs in case of negative externalities or benefits in case of positive externalities to third parties. When only the private sector produces such goods, too much or too little is produced correspondingly. To overcome this problem, governments rely on taxes in the case of negative externalities and on subsidies in the case of positive externalities. Governments also redistribute income to overcome poverty and support various groups such as retirees. Furthermore, governments organize various events to enhance a sense of unity among the population. Nevertheless, objectivists claim that none of these arguments justify government intervention. Now I shall describe a story by another author. The writer Ursula Le Guin wrote many novels, poems, stories and children's books. In this video I will talk about her parable story, The Ones Who Walk Away from Amalas, from her collection, The Wind's Twelve Quarters. The story was initially published in 1973 and received the Hugo Award in 1974. In the story, Le Guin discusses the price that people are willing to pay for their well-being. Is the suffering of an underprivileged minority justified when most people prosper? The story talks about the blissful city of Omelas, whose happiness depends on the suffering of one child. Nobody can soothe or change this child's fate, otherwise the happiness in Omelas will cease. Everyone in the city knows about the child, but most still enjoy life. Yet some people abandon this bliss, and they are the ones who walk away from Omelas. This topic is not new to literature. Dostoevsky raised this issue on behalf of his character Ivan Karamazov in the novel The Karamazov Brothers. In that novel, Ivan Karamazov argued with his brother Alyosha. Ivan claimed that God, who allows innocent children to suffer, does not exist. William James, in his work The Moral Philosopher and the Moral Life, also raised this issue. Unlike Atlas Shrugged, comparable in length to Tolstoy's War and Peace, Ursula Le Guin's story is short and concise. Unlike Rand, Le Guin does not give a categorical answers to the issues she raises. She shows more of her ideas in action. Ursula Le Guin received better approval among literary critics than Ayn Rand. Le Guin earned many awards in the areas of science fiction and fantasy, such as Hugo, Nebula, and Locus. Both Ayn Rand and Ursula Le Guin condemned utilitarianism that proclaimed the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Yet unlike Rand, Ursula Le Guin portrayed the suffering of a single child, rather than a class of entrepreneurs opposing a mob of mediocrities. Le Guin denounced capitalism and its impact on art. At the National Book Awards ceremony of 2014, she said, We live in capitalism. Its power seems inescapable. But then, so did the divine right of kings. Any human power can be resisted and changed by human beings. Resistance and change often begin in art, very often in our art, the art of words. Sustainable and plausible alternatives to capitalism do not exist yet, and experiments either create dictatorship or elements of the market are still present in the new economy. Nevertheless, the works of Ursula Le Guin, and in particular, the ones who walk away from Amalas, are fascinating reads. I encourage my viewers to comment on this video and on the above mentioned works. Like and subscribe to my channel. Wish you folks all the best!